you are now listening to Mike's Opinion, Logic Unleashed. That's right, you are now listening to the Mike's Opinion Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. How are you doing today? You know I always want to know, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I hope all is well with you. I hope you do not have the COVID virus. I hope that you are COVID free, or you got your antibodies, or you got your vaccine, or you're wearing a mask, or not wearing a mask, or doing whatever you want to do today. But today is not about that. But as always, like I said, I hope you're doing okay. Today, as you can see from the title, is about social media and the internet overall as a matter of fact because hey what would we do without it what would we ever do without it what did we do without it huh all of these social medias and the world wide web and the internet I'll tell you what we did because I was alive before any of this shit existed we lived we communicated, we picked up the muck, we picked up the phone, and we dialed. And if you missed the number, you was like, damn it! And then you started over. That's before press button phone. For some of y'all are like, what is he talking about? Yes, there used to be something called rotary phones. But, I digress. As I normally do. Yes, I normally do digress. But, Today, we're going to talk about that, and this is in light of several things that have happened. One of the biggest things is Facebook and Instagram went offline for six or seven hours Monday. Yes, this past Monday. And so, what did we do? A lot of people panicked. Listen, there are a lot of people that have viable businesses that thrive on these social medias. But, you know, these people that are so-called influencers, they don't influence my ass. So, hey, I guess, you know, 16 to 25, maybe that demographic, they influence what they wear, what they listen to, what they eat, where they go and all of these things. Right. But what did they do? What would some of these influencers do? And trust me, I ain't knocking nobody's hustle, right? You can't knock the hustle. Get yours however you choose to get yours, right? Yes. But I wanted to dig in and talk to you, talk about this today because of that, you know, that brought to, um, to everybody's mindset, you know, what would we do if social media died? Right? What would happen? Oh my goodness. Can you imagine if it was out more than for six hours? Can you imagine? Huh? No, I can't. But there are many things that I want to say about social media. And I had to, as you know, if you've listened to me before, uh, first of all, thank you for doing so. Like and subscribing, reaching out to me at Mike's Opinion Show at gmail.com, shooting at me in emails, and I still am replying to everybody. But, you know, the, I dive too deep. I started going into the rabbit hole of social media. It goes without saying, or maybe it does, the largest of all of them who has the most active users worldwide is Facebook. And I mentioned Facebook and Instagram who and Facebook, which owns Instagram and many others, which I'll get to in a minute, went down. They claimed it was for some other reason. They wasn't a hacker or anything, but um, hackers, ransomware, all that has been 
rampant. There's a local ISD here that's going through it. There was a huge um, uh, publishing company that owns many, many sites and auction sites. They were at a ransomware attack. Um, you know, maybe it was Facebook. You think Facebook paid up? I don't know. They probably, they should have the world's best hackers and the world's best computer team. That's my thought. They should have the best of the best of the best. But speaking of Facebook, there was a whistleblower who recently came out. Her name is Francis Hogan. And she's 37 years old, former Facebook product manager. She went on 60 Minutes. And she sounds just like a pissed off employee. But she says there's national security concerns. She's concerned about, you know, how these social media really affects young girls. Which I found it interesting. What about the young boys? Hmm? Yeah. And that particular Nugget made me want to do this particular episode because I asked the question in the title of this episode, what does the internet and social media have in common with a car, an electrical outlet, and a gun? Do you know what they have in common? Hmm? I'll tell you, they all require parental oversight in terms of how it relates to children's, tweens, teens, yes. Now, I'll just go up front and tell you a car. You know, I believe 15 or 16, you get your permit. Would you hand the keys to your car without any oversight, any parental involvement to a a, a teenager? No, you wouldn't. And I dare say some adults shouldn't have the keys to their car, but that's a whole nother episode. Electrical outlets. When you, your baby, and I'm a parent and a grandparent, you know, when, 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 your baby starts that getting that mobility. They found out how to use their legs. They start walking and running and you got to watch them every second, right? But they can stick some things in the outlet because they don't know no better. Requires parental oversight. Same thing with a gun. Now, with a gun, I know some kids that are learn how to, they go hunting, hunting with their parents. Mostly the dad, usually, but parents at very young age, five, six, seven, eight. Take him hunting. Show him how to kill that deer. Right? Requires serious parental oversight. And that is what social media and the internet have in common with the car, electrical outlet, a gun. They all have those things in common. So when I see these um, whistleblowers and complainers about Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, all of these, they're destroying my child. Well, guess what? If your child is not raised with communication, Love, taught self-love, and honest, candid discussions. It doesn't matter whether it's social media now or a hundred years ago, whether it was gossip from that badass kid or bad um, uncle or bad parent. And this is the core of what I want to discuss today. But before we get there, I just want to, when I started digging down this rabbit hole of um, social media, yeah, I I just, you know, I wanted to get some, some insight. Now, I wasn't going in the right direction because I really needed to go into the psychology and how these things affected our entire society 
is the research I should have been doing, but I couldn't help but but just digging in to the specifics of these social medias. Now, I <laughs> there are literally hundreds, hundreds of social media type sites and apps and whatnot. And there are four basic ones. There's social news, social networks, microblogging, there's bookmarking sites, media sharing, there's community blogs. So those are the, the four or five, uh, well, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six types, basic types of these social media. Okay. But I'm going to rattle off a few. I've already mentioned Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There's Triller, Periscope, Vimeo, Ubo, Peanut, House Party, Caffeine, 23 Snaps, Badu, 8 Tracks, Band, Blind, Despora, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, of course, which I mentioned, MeWe, Fark, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. Snapchat, Reddit, Pinterest, YouTube, Tagged, Nextdoor, Quora, Meetup, Flickster, Twitch, Crunchyroll, LiveJournal, Bubbly, Flickr, Yelp. Uh, I, I mean, look, QQ, also known as Tencent, WeChat, TikTok, huh? Lineplay, Telegram, another Badu. MySpace, you heard of that, huh, huh? Linktree, Milkshake, Clubhouse, Tumblr, Kick. Look, that's just a little bit. I could go on and on listing these hundreds of social media. Now, to give you a little insight into the strength and where we at globally in terms of social media, here's a startling statistic. As of July 2021, which was a couple of months ago now, three months ago now, actually, it's already October, 4.48 billion people actively use social media. That bears repeating. 4.48 billion people. Nearly 57% of the total global population. So that does the, you know, total global population includes indigenous people living out in the woods, babies that can't know how to use, they don't know how to use their fingers yet. So they can't get on that phone just yet or that tablet or that desktop. Right. And, you know, people that are upwards in age and I'm just keeping 100. My mom's is 80 and she'd be on it. My mom's is 80 and she'd be on social media. Like, but my mom's is a little bit of an enigma. You know, she still got all her teeth. She don't use no cane. She still she's still popping. And she is my hero because I hope to have my mental and physical faculties all still properly functioning. When I get to that age. But in terms of the capable individuals of age that have access to the internet, nine in ten internet users use social media each month. Let that soak in for a minute. Nine out of every ten. These are powerful mediums. Medium is another social network, by the way. But medium, the, I mean, these, um, these things are powerful. So I understand these whistleblowers who are, um, you know, saying that we need oversight, right? We need Congress to dive in. Because shit's crazy. Because we are, are not protecting our kids. We are leaving ourselves susceptible and vulnerable 
on a global scale. Huh? Yes. That's what we're doing. Hate speech. Foreign entities. Election influences. Right? Listen. Yes. I understand. I understand. I understand. But just like a car, just like a knife, just like an electrical outlet, when it comes to the kids, if you have not taken the time, the love, the effort, and instilled self-love and self-respect in that child. The world's going to eat them. According to Ms. Haugen's complaint, as she testified in front of Congress today, 13.5% of teenage girls, teen girls on Instagram say the platform makes thoughts of suicide and self-injury worse. Eating disorders, anorexia, anorexia, things of that nature. And I'm not unsympathetic. And the real bottom line is we can't save everybody. Sadly, there are going to be those that think about and act on suicide. And in my show notes, if you happen to be one of those people, I will put the suicide prevention hotline in there. Because you need to seek help if you can. You need to seek help if you feel like that. But Mark Zuckerberg, majority stake owner of or shareholder of Facebook, has giant bags under his eyes. He's dumb, dumb rich. But because of this thing he created back in 2005. Facebook's only been alive for 16 years. 16 years. That's it. And how do you think he feels? Now, there have been people on Facebook Live that have done horrendous things, including suicide. Is he or Facebook responsible for that? No! They're not! Just like the people that make cars, the people that make knives, the people that make electrical outlets. No, they are not. You know who is responsible? The parent. You ever heard that saying? Guns don't kill people. People kill people. It's a fact. It is a fact of the matter. And it comes down to parenting. Now, the sad thing is also, there's a lot of kids raising kids out here. There's a lot of people that were not parented correctly that reproduced, that had kids of their own. So, they don't know no better. They don't know how to guide their child to a place of self-love, a place of self-respect, a place of sense. Because I, I, you know, common sense, it's not common. I don't know whoever came up with that common sense. It's not common. There's so many people out here without sense. And once again, I need to always interject that I am no saint. I am not perfect. I am not throwing stones in a glass house. I am not condemning anyone. However, I am acknowledging My observations. These are my opinions based on things I have seen, witnessed, and experienced. I grew up in New York City in the projects. They're like little cities. They're like little sociology 
exposures, you know, you get to learn about humans real early. And growing up in New York City, as you venture out around the city, there are people everywhere, all the time. So you get a clear picture of virtually every nugget of society, every type of person, all types of languages, foods, um, cultures, races. I was exposed to all of that in a variety of ways. So I know what I'm talking about to a certain degree, just like anybody that's grown up in these major metropolises that are concentrated with people, high concentrations of people, of humans. You learn about people. You don't have any other choice unless you're a hermit and you can't be a hermit. I'll give you an example. Just going to school in high school, I had to take two buses and a train. Now, I could switch it up. I could cut it down to one bus if I didn't mind walking. But early in the morning is what they call strap hangers on the subway. A strap hanger, they have these handles hanging from the bars or hanging from the ceiling of the train. And you hold on. You know why you hold on? Not only because the train is moving, but because you're packed in like sardines. Because there are literally thousands of people moving about the city to and going to and fro in the morning to work, to school, in the afternoon, away from school, in the evening, away from work, going back home. There are people everywhere. There are millions and millions of people in a very small area. I've seen the crazy. I've seen the criminals. I've seen the nice people. I've seen the hateful people. I have literally seen all types of people. Basically and fundamentally speaking. So, with the advent of the internet and the subsequent development of these social outlets, We now have a way to communicate instantly with literally anyone on the planet. And we can do so with anonymity. We don't have to be ourselves. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the things that Facebook is being urged to do. Because you do not have to show a driver's license. You don't have to really verify yourself. You know what you need? A phone number, maybe. Maybe. And we all can, we can get a burner phone number just like that, right? And the all important email address. And you can get one of those for free in a, a bunch of places. In a bunch of places. So you can be whoever you want. Steal a couple of pictures from here and there and boom. There's this thing called catfishing. If you haven't heard about it, they call it catfishing. I, you know, I, I eat a good fried catfish. I'm not going to lie. Even a blackened catfish. So I don't know why they really call it catfish. Maybe because they're bottom feeders, perhaps. But catfish is the practice of posing as someone else. Communicating on the internet with someone and acting like you're someone else. Including photographs and the whole nine. Yeah. So, parenting. Facebook's been here, like I said, 16 years. The internet's been here longer. If you're not keeping it 100 with your child as they grow up and let them know that this internet can be as dangerous as a car, as an electrical outlet, And a gun. It can lead to your serious injury or demise. This shit can kill you. This shit can harm you. Mentally. I, you know, graduated high school and college long ago. 
But I can only imagine what it's like to have these social media influences. Kids are cruel. Let me rephrase that. Some kids can be cruel. Peer pressure is real. So you heap on top of all of that. You know, your teenage hormones are raging. That you have to monitor these social things because anything you say or do could be broadcast to your friends, your peers in the world. I've seen many. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, school fights. Somebody gets beat down. Somebody in the bathroom. We are awesome and horrible humans. We are great and terrible. We are love. And we are hate. And I've often wondered, just like an atom has positive and negative electrons in order to exist, is this what we need in humanity? Just like for a plant or a tree to grow, it needs the sunshine and the rain? Do we have to have this evil, hateful, negative aspect of humanity? And I've, like I said, I've seen it firsthand. And I, I, you know, I've seen people do hateful, mean shit for no reason. It wasn't, wasn't revenge. The person that did it to didn't have it coming. And I, I often wonder, you know, why'd you do that? They're just some mean people. And once again, I circle back parenting. I have been fortunate enough to come from a household filled with love. Lots of hugs, kisses, and love. And I have embraced my children the same way. But I've also kept it real with them and let them know the world out there is dangerous. And you got to watch yourself. You got to protect yourself. You got to love yourself enough to walk away from something that is not in your best interest. So when it comes to this social media and social media itself being blamed for some of these things that happen, once again, where's the parenting? Now, these foreign adversaries, this governmental shit, these, you know, you look at these governments, right? And I, I do digress, but it's all connected. A lot of these are just powerful families that have been in existence for a long time. And there are powerful families, millions of them, that exist. And they're just people that were taught something. You know, I have seen things be taught. Bad habits be passed down from generation to generation to generation. Now I'm a black man. And I'm going to get flack for what I'm about to say. But I don't eat slave food no more. And I really didn't fuck with it when I was younger. Even though I was raised with it. Now you might say. Yo, brother, brother, slow down, slow down, slow down, Mike. Why are you talking about slave food? Because that's what it was, in my opinion. I'm talking about pig feet, pig ears, pig tails. I'm talking about chitlins, which are the intestines of the pig. Okay? I'm talking about cow tail, ox, tails, slave food. Why anybody's fucking with it these days, I don't know. I don't know. I understand the concept 
of soul food. This is what we had for centuries. This is what the slave owner would throw to the slaves when they got the hams. You know, they would keep the hams and the bacon and the ribs and stuff like that, you know, for themselves. Throw us the rest. And we made magic with that shit. But I never had a taste for it. I look at a pig's foot. And I always, since I was younger, I remember my grandma, you want some of this pig feet? Nah, nah, nana, you can have that. May she rest in peace. God, I miss my nana. <sighs> but I just, I, I, you know, I won't fucking with it. And, 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 I, I, you know, these things, like I said, they, they're all connected. So, these social medias are just like that. They need oversight. If you are giving your kid a phone, a tablet, access to a computer, you're not monitoring their friends, what they talk about, what they watch. And I hear some parents, well, you know, he's 14 now. He deserves some privacy. What? 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 Do you know what world we live in? Private what? I don't give a fuck if you're a YouTube star and you are paying the bills, which is most likely not the case. But you don't get no privacy because my job, my duty as a parent is to make sure when you bounce and you go venture out into the world to claim your own, to be, you know, find your own family, find your own way. When you leave the nest, I need to empower you with all the tools. And part of that is like not giving you the keys to the car. And say, oh, I'll see you when you get back. Hope you make it back. Not giving you a phone unless I'm monitoring it. And I got all the apps on there so I can monitor every keystroke, every video, every text message. I need to know what you're doing. Plus, I'm putting all the parental blocks on there. Who you kicking it with? Who you hanging with? What they doing over there? What they about? What they parents about? I'm not losing you to some preventable bullshit. Can social media and the internet be great? Of course. Just like humans can be great. But if we're keeping it 100, we all know there's a dark side. And that's what you need to protect your kids from. The dark side. Okay? Because there are those that want to ruin them. There are those that want to use them. There are those that want to influence them. Hmm? Give you a couple more stats. Facebook has 2.8, almost 2.9 billion monthly active users. YouTube? Almost 2.3 billion users has a huge advertising reach. WhatsApp? Two billion. The world is on these joints. IG, 1.3 billion. Facebook Messenger, 1.3 billion. TikTok, 732 million. Tencent, also known as QQ, 606 million. Okay, social media affects politics, news, all kinds of groups, including hate groups, porn. You ever heard of OnlyFans? Yeah. Porn. Some of these porn sites have have um, social networks within them. 
commerce. Right? All types of business, advertising, all of these things. The internet and social media are part of. So, I definitely, like I said, I, I, um, I had to give my opinion on this. And like I said, there's so many different avenues I could have explored when talking about the internet and social media. But like I said, in light of the, the recent Facebook and Instagram outage and reading this testimony from this so-called whistleblower, this Facebook whistleblower, and that's, that popped out to me, you know, how she, you know, talked about how social media is influencing Kids. So were bullies and other humans before the advent of the internet. Suicides, abductions, rapes, hate speech, hate groups, and all of these other bad things. Happened well before the internet ever existed. The internet just made it easier. It made it easier. Made it faster. The information spreads like wildfire. And it's just going to get faster. It's just going to get more vivid. It's going to get worse. Can you see where we're headed? And I don't see any viable way to stop it. We're constantly accelerating. Caffeine is being ingested at a much higher pace. You take your life in your hands when you travel in your car because if you cut somebody off by accident, they may kill you. Which also seems pretty new to me. I don't recall road rage being a thing. Something's happening to us humans. Something bad is happening. The bad is Seemingly outweighing the good. So I urge everyone that's listening to my voice right now. Choose good. Let's be helpful. Let's be kind. Let's be patient. With one another. Please. I don't know how to solve these world's problems I really wish I did I wish I had a solution for every mom and dad out there who has to combat the internet who has to go and fight against these powerful Mediums, these powerful forms of communication. You can just type the word girl in any of the popular search engines, and you don't have to search too far before you get some pornographic images. How do you protect your kid from that? Hmm? These parental tools, the parental blocks, it's better than nothing, right? But we were all teenagers. And at some point, for the most part, generally speaking, for a teenager, your parents become the enemy and they become idiots. They know nothing. As a teenager, you think you know everything. 
I know it all. Mom and dad, you've fed me, housed me, clothed me for my entire life. But now I'm 12, 13, 14, 15. You know nothing. Me and my friends, we know everything. You're dumb. Feed me. Give me money. And fuck off. Fortunately, I can tell you, having survived the teenage years of one of my children, eventually they pass, having remembered being a teenager myself. Being a teenager should be classified as a form of temporary insanity. Because of the way you're growing. Because of the way your hormones are raging, for lack of a better word. Hormones are going crazy, right? So it's hard when you're in those moments of teenage rage and teenage emotional storms to know that it's going to pass. And, and let's, let's make no mistake that Some do not make it past that. They don't make it past those teenage years or those very early 20 years. Because I said, my daughter and I, we've always had a strong relationship, but there was a time in her early teen years where I actually told my daughter, fuck you. And a parent that has been there, you know, I I hung up the phone and I I looked at the phone like I could not believe those words came out of my mouth. You know, I've been in my daughter's life since before she came out of the womb. You know, and, and I was there from conception to birth and prior to that with her mother. So, this little girl, I counted her fingers and toes when she first came out the womb and I cried and she was a baby and watched her, you know, I taught her how to, she learned how to walk and I fed her and clothed her. How it got from there to there? You, 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 it dumbfound you. It's like, what the fuck, what happened? How did that happen? But often as parents, we forget. That we were that to some degree. Because usually the apple does not fall far from the tree. And what that means is your kids are usually just like you. So. We forget as parents what it's like. Because we're caught up in the day to day. We forget. We lose touch with the kid inside of us. I fortunately still am a big kid. Still like going to music park, stuff like that. I enjoy Stuff, but I'm mature, still handle my business. But we forget. So we forget how to relate to that. We forget how to talk to that. And we still sometimes try to be too cool or too friendly, you know, and I know that's easy to do. Once again, I'm not throwing stones. There's no perfect way because all humans, we, we all have these differences. So what may work for one teenager may not work for another. Teenager, you got to try different methods. And hopefully if you've been there their whole life, you know them better than they know themselves because they're still learning about themselves. So you should be able to form an alliance. You should be able to find the correct form of communication. But even then, there's no guarantee because like I said, my daughter and I, very strong, strong relationship. Strong communication, and we still found it to that point because she was tripping. Basically speaking, well, her mother called me and said, "Not hello, how you doing? Nothing." Her mother called me and said, "You need to talk to your daughter." Oh, well, yeah, something's awry. So immediately, I'm on defense. And then we got to that point in the conversation and I said those words. 
fortunately, we made it past us, made it past those times. And, uh, now she has kids of her own. And I see where that's headed. And I laugh because it's every parent's joy to watch your kids' kids give them torment. I don't know why there's some pleasure in that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a joyful thing to a certain degree. Social media, y'all. The internet. Watch yourself. Be careful. Protect your children from it just like you would a car, a gun, or an electrical outlet, or any other thing that can cause harm because that's what it is. It's great and it's awful. Electricity, being able to plug a plug in is fantastic. Having a car, being able to travel is wonderful. But it could also be very dangerous. It could also be fatally dangerous. It can be. And that's what I wanted to say today. I just wanted to remind you to be mindful. It's crucial. Especially as these things become more immersive even more powerful, even more vivid, even faster. Do the diligence. All of us got these fucking devices in our hands. Put them down for a minute and talk to your kid. And it's going to take some real effort because you you are fighting Goliath. Okay? Okay. A Goliath with a shiny object in his hand. And for them to put those down and talk or read an actual book is unheard of. I'm going to end this episode, but I just want to tell you. I told you my daughter's older and has family of her own. Well, my wife and I also have a single digit. This is my second wife, of course. And there are two days in our household where there are no electronics. When we first implemented this a couple of years ago, it was like, what? You know, he fought back a little bit, but he's fine now. He, he knows it. However, we can see the withdrawal symptoms during those days. These electronic devices are powerful addictions, powerful hypnotists. Make no mistake. It is a fight. What we're dealing with, and I don't know if there's been any long-term studies since the creation of the internet and, more importantly, the handheld devices like these phones and tablets, where and how they have affected us in terms of attention span, in terms of self-worth, in, in terms of parent-child relationships. But I think there was a uh, show I watched. I think it's called The Social Network. You might want to check that out. A lot of these um, social media companies are wrestling with how to put the cat back in the bag because they're aware of how these things affect people. I don't know that any of these mobile phone and tablet manufacturers know or care, even though they've testified in front of Congress as well. Like I said, I don't know the answers. I don't even know all the questions, but I can tell you what I've done to try to to fight for my child's well-roundedness, for my child's ability to embrace self-love and self-worth and to be balanced in all aspects. I was talking with a friend of mine. He was like, yo, 
we were talking and I said, what we're trying to do is fight the future. But if the future is a full integration with technology, then fuck the future. I don't think Earth was made for that. Do you? Let me know. Chime in. Shoot me an email at Mike's Opinion Show at gmail.com. Again, that's Mike's Opinion Show at gmail.com. As always, I ask if you can please support the show in monetary fashion. Just go to the show notes, Cash App, Venmo, uh, PayPal is all there. Shoot me an email at Mike's Opinion Show and I'll send you my mailing address. If you want to shoot me a big box of cash, surprise me. Shock me. Send me a shoebox with 50 G's in it. I would love ya. I would thank you. Help the show grow. I need all kinds of stuff. I really do. I'd really appreciate that. And I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't buy my son a new pair of shoes. So you would truly be supporting Mike of the Mike's Opinion Podcast. And like I said, most of it would go back into the show. Equipment, marketing, help me grow the show, please. If you choose not to donate monetarily, value for value. And that's what means if you find value in the show, send some value back in the form of of money. That'd be great. Or high-end recording equipment would be great, too. A nice, good, I still use a desktop for the most part, but a nice laptop. I'm trying to switch. I don't know. I really want to from Windows to Apple, but I, I don't know. And I'm not plugging anybody. This show is not sponsored by anybody. I'd like to keep it commercial free. But like I said, if you can't support in monetary fashion, please, on all the so- <laughs> on all the socials, ah, imagine that. Yes, I'm there reluctantly. My wife is considerably younger than I. She usually handles most of that. I do still handle some of it. But she's a lot more savvy and capable at it than I am. But on all the socials. Like, subscribe, share, comment, do all those things, please. Just take a moment right after this show and, and or pause right now and, and do that, please. It only takes a second and it will be greatly appreciated and very effective. That's why you always hear all the other shows. Everybody says it. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Because it grows. That's how it grows, frankly speaking. That's how that gets done. Can't do it without you. So I would really appreciate it. I sigh, not as a sigh as a relief, not as a sigh of, of frustration, but a sigh of weight, like I'm carrying a, a heavy load because I've seen so much in my half a century plus of life and this direction that we're headed I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think it could be good, but we have to be aware of what we have in our hands. It is a gun and it is powerful. And how we use it will determine the fate of humanity because this internet and the social media are now the center focal point of any and all communication. These handheld devices are the focal points and the means by which we use the internet and social media. Where are we going? Where I'm Mike, and this has been the Mike's Opinion Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening to Mike's Opinion. Logic Unleashed.
Yeah.